Got your Bibles? Everybody stand up. You guys have been sitting. I got 15 minutes. Hallelujah. We can do it. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. And I will never, 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 never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my topic is, uh, my title is called True Passion. I, I couldn't figure out, I, I was thinking of God's passion, I was thinking of His passion. But you know what, it's, it, it is God's passion, it is His, His, uh, His passion. What we need to learn, and I, and th- I can already see that this will turn into a series. So, turn into Matthew 6.33. There is revelation that I, there, there are scriptures that I had been taught one way. And in the last three weeks, God has turned around and showed me something out of these scriptures that I had never seen before. And I thought it was so interesting. And, um, and I can attest to it that if you will do this, it will actually work in your life. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. I hope I give you an example. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added, given to you as well. A New Testament, a New Living uh, Translation says this, uh, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and he will give you everything you need. Yeah, everything that you need. So... So what are you talking about, Pastor? This means if I put his dreams before my dreams, if I put his passion before my passion, if I put his desire before my desire, if I put his wants before my wants, then I'm not going to have to worry about a thing because he's going to provide everything that I need. This is saying, this verse is saying, if I put him first and I become so passionate about him, then he will give me everything that I need. We should be so passionate about seeking his will. You know, and I'll get into this and, and you know how, where the scripture says and, and we should know um, da, 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 uh, and doing his will and some do it good and some do it okay and some do it perfect well i discovered that there is some something to that scripture that i had never seen see i've been taught in 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 uh, matthew 6:33 that it first seek the kingdom of god i mean i've heard messages i've heard sermons about it and talking about you just got to seek the kingdom of god and and you know just go to your prayer closet and and just just seek it and do whatever and on and on and on and and i'm like ah i'm like according to what this guy's preaching he's over here and i'm like way over here and i'm going I can't, I can't, I don't, I'm not a guy that's going to spend four hours in a prayer closet and praying and just seeking God. I, I'm just, I'm just not wired that way. There is people that pray that long and they, and they seek God and I, and I, and I can, I, I commend them, but I'm not that type of guy. Uh, I, I will do it when I get on my motorcycle or if I'm, you know, and I just praying in tongues and going down, I, I'll do it. But I believe this. Fulfilling the will of God begins with fulfilling the Great Commission. Whoa. See, God expects us to win souls. Proverbs 11.30 says this, a New American Standard. You all know it. I said it last week. He that wins souls is... Did you ever read it out of the Amplified? He who is wise, captures live, human lives. He who is wise captures human lives for God. As a fisher of men, he gathers and receives them for eternity. Back to Matthew 6, 
33. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. What do you think God's passion, what do you think his most desire is on this earth? Huh? People. Thank you. Every one of you, and I've taught that, you are precious in his sight. You are his son. You're his daughter. But there is a whole world out there that don't know him. And what does he want? He wants his kingdom to expand. Who's going to lead these people into the kingdom of God? Angels? I wish. My wife, every time I, I walk up and I go, I want to ask you a personal question. And my wife goes, And she just starts praying. We, we led two people to the Lord. We just about missed our last plane. Uh huh. She goes, uh huh. And uh, we led two groups. Yeah, your last notice. And we led two, two girls, two young ladies to the Lord. We go to sit down, and there's a, a young lady, and Sveta is sitting beside her, and I says, Okay, hon, it's your turn. <laughs> she starts praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he who captures live humans, human lives, is wise. When you capture, when you begin to seek his kingdom, in other words, when you begin to do what he wants you to do, and I'm not talking about, oh, man, I'm just going to quit my job and I'm just going to lead people to the Lord left, right, and center. I am not talking about that. I'm talking about when you go to work, you need to be prayed up, you need to be stirred up, you need to have a passion. And that's where, that's where I had changed because now I see people in a different light than I'd seen them for Quite a few years. So I had to rekindle the passion within me. It happened at Sturgis. And I literally weep and cry when people don't accept Christ. Because I guess I got his heart. And I don't want anyone to go to hell. I I do not want anyone to go to hell. I want to take as many people and get them into heaven as possible. We see this according to uh, Matthew 6.33. That God's blessing follows them who busy themselves that win souls. Nothing is more important than winning souls to God. You guys would rather have heard my faith message, didn't you? (laughs) Amen, yeah. We are capturing souls as fisher of men. Say this, I am. In the business of capturing souls for God. Now, was I always here? No, you know me. Some of you have known me for years and years and years. And I, and I, was, I was a person that would be kind of like shy just to pray for somebody. I mean, in church is different. But out on the street, you know, where, where the boogeyman lives? You know, and you're kind of like, I don't know. What if they reject me? What if, what if they don't want prayer? What if they don't want... And... and and it it's like last night, I said, I said, say this prayer with me to the last two girls that we led to the Lord. And I says, God, forgive me of my sins. I said, say this prayer. Oh, we're supposed to say it. And I says, yeah. God, for, and I led them through the, and they both said the prayer. And then I gave them a, my chariots of light cross. All of you that ordered crosses, I brought them back with me. Um, and, and it's so cool because it says Jesus saves on one side. And I says, here's a reminder that on, on September the 14th, you asked Jesus Christ into your life. And if anybody, if anybody, if anybody asks you, do you know if you go to heaven for sure or not? And you go, on September the 14th, 2013, I asked Jesus Christ to be my Lord, my Savior. And they go, seriously? I led one lady to the Lord and... Um, Ah, that's where I bought my shirt. She was a Mexican lady. Letter to the Lord. I just reconfirmed about four times on September the 12th or whatever it was. Uh, you're, you're in the kingdom of God. And, and, uh, and I says, and we're going to see you there. 
We're going to see you in heaven. And she says, you know what? When I get to heaven, I'm going to walk up to Jesus and I'm going to say, Jesus, you're letting me in because that dude told me that I have accepted you as my personal savior. I was like, okay. Greg, this Greg was with me. Your passion for souls should be noticeable, contagious, obvious. As we're passionate. And you know what? Like I said, I wasn't there. I started by just, you know, praying for the odd person. And, and Reg uh, Page, he lives in, in Victoria. And I led people to the Lord. And I even showed you a video. Uh, this James that I led there. He was a naval officer. Led him to the Lord. And, and Reg says, Doug, what has happened to you? What has happened to you? Because... I thought you were a soul winner before, but you are so changed. He says, what has happened to you? And I says, you need the, you need the baptism of fire. <laughs> Not just the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but you need the baptism of fire. And we're down there in, uh, we're down all week with Brother uh, Jerry Savell. And he's, he's preaching one of his messages and all of a sudden he just stops and he says, Doug Klan, come up here. Didn't he? And he says, what happened to you? He noticed I was different. And he says, I want you to share what happened to you. And I shared what happened to me and, and I kind of I don't know where I, I don't even remember what I said, and I um, and I uh, all I know is I had a bunch of people crying, and uh, then afterwards he says, and after Sturgis, this man every time I turned around was leading somebody else into the kingdom of God. He says to me, he says, you take that passion. That fire for doing God's will is his will is the perfect will for him is that you would get to a place that you become bold enough to walk up to somebody and to begin by just simply, hey, I see your coffin. Can I pray for you? You know that Nancy? Not saved. And, and she just became a friend of mine about two weeks ago or so. And uh, she said, uh, she, uh, it, I got a, a message from her and said, uh, how are you? And I said, uh, I am so fantastic. It's just like great. And, she's, and I says, how are you doing? And she says, I, I have a fever and I, I'm sick. Can you pray for me? See, that, you don't understand the power that's on the inside of you. You don't understand that when you go to lay hands on somebody, there's an anointing on the inside of you that just wants to get out of you and into that person. You don't understand that the words that you speak are so powerful that they go and they accomplish and do what they've been sent to do. This girl texts me back and says, Wow, I'm healed. Not even saved. Then about two days later, what was this morning? And one... 1.30 or whatever in the morning. How do I get into the kingdom of God? See, that is the power. God, God had orchestrated that we would cross paths. How many times a day does he orchestrate someone across your path for you to pray for? Yeah, Lord. Ralph, come up here. Give me a mic. How did you lead? The, Ralph is the most quietest guy. He is like so shy. Come on up. You grab that. Thanks, Barry. Hey, okay, so just I'll just ask you questions because he is the shyest guy. And he was there the night that I led these um, the motorcycle president and the, and the prospect to the Lord. And, and he looks at you guys and he says, man, that guy's slick, right? And, and you were there. And you said, you said, 
you have stretched me so much and so far. And I thank you. And I want to thank you because now I've just read, I, I've just doubled myself. Because <laughs> now we have other chariots of light people. I, I, as I go through this message, you, I will commission and I will help you to lead people into the kingdom of God. Because this is a soul winning church. This is a church that wants to do what God wants to do. And is most foremost on his heart is to expand the kingdom of God. Amen. So how did you lead someone to the Lord? Well, I was taking the dog for a walk, right? And he was, he was mowing the lawn, this guy, right? And uh, I, I said, uh, oh, are you, you mow lawns for a living? And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it, he said. And I said, uh, oh, well, give me your card. Maybe I'll be away someday and you can do mine, right? And then I says, you, well, you've got a cross on. What's, what's that all about? And he says, oh, I didn't know what it was. He said, he said, it's, he said it's a rosary, he said. It was one of those. Oh, uh, yeah. He said, but I don't go to church. I, I said, well, you, you know, you can, if, if you were to die tomorrow, because you, I got that from you. <laughs> would, 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 you go to heaven or, would you go to heaven or go to hell? And he says, well, I don't know. And I says, well. You need to know. Why don't you just say this prayer? And, and he says, but I've got... You look at my arm. He says, I've got John 3.16 on my arm. And I said, well, you know what, what, what that is? I said, so God, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. To whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And he, said, he said, yeah. I said, so this day on September 12th, you're saved, right? And he said, well, yeah, I guess I am. Yeah. So, so I didn't do it the whole... Thing like hey. what, what you're saying about, because I couldn't really remember it all, but, but that just clued me in. That, that, for God right? so loved the world, yes, yeah. so, that he so died I gave for him. I phone him, I said, why don't you come to church on Sunday here, but he's not here. But okay, <laughs> yeah, it'll come. But he, yeah. said, he said he's got, he's, he's got issues with, with uh, like uh, church people. I said, yeah, well, I understand that too. I mean, I said, but I'm a church person, you know, you don't have issue with me, right? You know, you, you're not gonna like, you're not, you're not gonna like everybody. I said, if you go and play, if you're gonna play, going to play golf. I mean, you go, you go and play golf because you like playing golf. You don't like everybody in the golf club, right? Isn't that right? You know. That's great. I mean, that's the only way I can say it. I'm not a pastor. Yeah. I'm not a, like you say. <laughs> but, but you hear that a lot, don't you? You hear people say, well, uh, yeah, I kind of believe in God, but I, I don't like church. church. Well, why don't they? You know, it's, it's like something we've got to do to change. Yeah. Somehow, I don't know what it is. But I think it's a it's a fear thing too, right? It's it it's, is. it's a thing like uh, you feel like, well, they're perfect and we're not. Because I know I felt like that myself. I feel like, well, I'm, I don't want to go because I'm I'm not really where I should be. That's all it is, isn't it? Really. Amen. Because I said that to him. None of us are. Amen. Then I had another, then I thought, well, I tried this other guy in the park, then walking the dog again, and I got nowhere with him, because in the end I said, I said, if you, if you die tomorrow, would you, and he, and he said, well, I don't know what you mean by that, I said, I said, well, I'm a Christian, and he says, I'm a Muslim, and I was kind of stumped with that one, so maybe no. you can talk about that <laughs> one. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I didn't get nowhere with him, he told me all his works. And like he's doing well, he, he looks after his family, and he does everything yeah. good. And yeah. Really, I didn't have an answer for that. Yeah. Yeah. But, Ephesians you know, 2, Ephesians today. 2, 8 and 9. Y yeah. You cannot get into heaven by your works. Oh, that's the one thing I said to him. I said to, yeah. I said to him, well, my Bible says that, that uh, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Yes. So. Amen. You, know, you plant. I hope I'll meet you, you in the park you again, plant? buddy. You I'm plant it, yeah. You plant a seed, man. That's that's what it's all about. You will plant a seed, or you'll reap a harvest. But it's, it's you doing this that's made me think about doing that because I wouldn't normally do it. No. Amen. <laughs> I like you a lot. <laughs> it's about getting his passion 
in our lives, allowing him to change us, allowing him to lead us and guide us every day. It's doing his kingdom work first. And then ours will be looked after. How do I know that? Well, let me, let me say this. Is I was on a mission to lead people to the Lord as we were going down to Fort Worth and we're coming back. And um, when I... Uh, and, and so Sid and I get on, get on, go to get on the plane, and we discover we're not even sitting together. She's about six rows behind me. I walk up and I said, uh, uh, "Excuse me, can you put my wife and I together in a, in some place in this plane?" And oh yeah, you're, you're lucky today, man. We're bumping you up. Well, we got bumped up going down, and we got bumped up coming home. And I thought, you know what, that, that's not only the favor of God, but when you're doing what he wants you to do, then you need to begin to recognize where the blessings of God comes to you and turn around and give him all the glory. Because it's all about him. It's not about me. It's about him. And I give him all the glory because, I, I mean, otherwise I, I could have sat in one of those little seats, you know. And But no, I, I got to... Relax. See, that's where I found doing his kingdom first in my life. He adds all the things that I need in my life. Now, I'm not going to, I'm playing, I'm playing going to tell you because I'm not, I, I got to stop here. Because passion, if you get a passion, it can literally change the world. Passion can literally change the world. Acts seventeen six says these men they have actually upset the world. When you get a passion, you can change literally change people's lives. When you get a passion to do what? Now I'm going to tell you this honestly. You will not. I, I mean, I. Other than for the fire of God on your life and just ignites you to the ultimate you'll probably just go out this week and you may just share your testimony you know what god just been so good to me and he's done this and done that and they go oh wow that's cool and that may be the seed that you sow and that's it and that's good or you may say ah oh, you know how you how's your day going and they go oh man you wouldn't believe my day oh, oh let me pray for you what, what exactly do you need prayer for you may go that level see i'm talking about going from the good the acceptable perfect will of god or you may get to a place where you say god every day i'm going to get up and you just cross my path with somebody that either needs prayer that either needs to get saved or or, or i can plant a seed in their life every day this week lord let that be so When you have that desire to do what he wants done on this earth, watch and see the favor of God increase in your life. I'm going to talk about stirring up the passion, but it won't be next week because we have Blaine Bartell here Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Yes, and come, stir it up, invite 44 people. Exactly 44. No more, no less. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does anyone need prayer here for anything? Everybody's good? Hallelujah. I'm going to close. Those of you that are watching and those that are here, I call you blessed. I call you blessed in every area, every way. In her health, in the name of Jesus, I speak health to those that are watching, those that are here, they're needing health, wholeness and health in their bodies. I speak health into, their, into your bodies now in Jesus' name. Father, I speak finances into, the, into people's lives right now in the name of Jesus. I thank, for, thank you, Father God, for prosperity in every area, every way. And Father, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I thank you, Father, for amazing things. And I'm expecting... 
I'm expecting to get to a place that we have testimony Sunday where each and every person is going to be jumping up, excited. I led somebody to the Lord. I prayed for somebody blind eyes open. I, I seen a crippled person coming out of a wheelchair. I, I'm expecting because we're in those days. And as we do what you want us to do, you will, according to Matthew 6.33, you will look after every need that we have. And I thank you and I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. It's just a short, short. Oh, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I have I have put this on paper and it's something that I've been working through summer and Doug uh, pastor saw it and he you know yeah. um he gave his vote of confidence and approval it just I never made it public I made it a little bit public to the praise and worship team I believe and 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 uh, a couple other people but this is something I've I've started to declare I have started to declare over our church and what pastor talked today about how we need to decree. Mm. We decree things over ourselves, our lives, our church. We, we, we uh, believe, we receive it, and then we release it. But decreeing is speaking out. Speaking out what we are believing. Speaking out what God says about us. Speaking out in faith. To see, to see it happen in our lives as, uh, in the future. And it's so cool because I have been decreeing over our church through, like, before even summer started. I don't even remember exactly when I started to work on this. But spring, summer this year, I said, I thank you, Father God, and I decree that Edmonton Word of Faith is a healthy, thriving church. I decree that every heart in Edmonton Word of Faith is ignited and passionate to be a part of a church that is, that fills, fulfills its plans and purposes on this earth, increasing the kingdom of God and helping people rise up to their God-given destiny. And that's, as, that, that just so so rose up in me because that's what pastor is teaching us starting to talk about about passion to rise up to increase the kingdom of god i said i decree that edmonton word of faith is a church filled with enthusiastic people celebrating their life in christ where everyone is looking forward to coming together as a family to worship god to learn and to serve each time the church doors are open. Where people anticipate to be together and in the presence of God. That they can't help but arrive at church early. And pack its sanctuary long before the service begins. And we're starting to see that. I decree that Edmonton Word of Faith is a church where people get saved on a weekly basis. And we're starting to see that. I decree that Edmonton Word of Faith is a church where the whole congregation is united in prayer, filling up the sanctuary every time the prayer is scheduled. And we're starting to see that even Sunday mornings, as Pastor asked, said, believed that we need to start coming earlier and start praying here before the service begins. And this is, I have more, but these are just a few things that I already start, we already start seeing. Amen. And so uh, we will, I will, I believe we will put it in the shorter form and we will decree it together over our church. And one thing I also believe we need to say and decree right now by faith. Look to your left, look to your right, look behind, look in front of you where you see empty seats and say, I decree, let's do it together. I decree that each and every empty seat and every extra chair that we have behind stacked in the hallway is filled. We decree that God brings people from the west and east and north and south 
to fill this place. In Jesus' name. And for his glory. Amen. 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 Say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> See, you See you next Sunday.